praying for grace to understand. Spirit of Jesus, open our hearts to live and to love the gospel of the Lord. Heart to Heart, a Catholic media ministry, presents an inspiring gospel reflection by Father Michael Sparrow. Father Michael is a Jesuit priest working as a writer and retreat master at the Bellarmine Jesuit Retreat House outside Chicago. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the crowd, they will seize and persecute you they will hand you over to the synagogues and to prisons, and they will have some of you led before kings and governors because of my name. It will lead to your giving testimony. Remember, you are not to prepare your defense beforehand, for I myself will give you a wisdom in speaking that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or refute. You will even be handed over by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends. And some of you will be put to death. But not a hair of your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's Gospel from Luke is a stark reminder of the persecution that the Church has faced for the last 2,000 years because of proclaiming the name and the values of Jesus. Bishop Barron, in a commentary on this passage, observed, when will, asked the question, when will the Church cease to be persecuted? And the answer is only when Christ comes again in the second coming. Because to speak truth to power, to proclaim the gospel of Jesus, to proclaim the name of Jesus, is inevitably going to infuriate the powers of evil. Goodness, truth, love, nonviolence, the name of Jesus will always infuriate the evil one and the ways in which the evil one is operating, or whom Jesus calls the prince of this world. It's naive on our part to expect that the kingdom is going to be fully realized within our own lifetime. The call for us is, I think, especially to be in solidarity with those places of the church that are actively persecuted for proclaiming the gospel. The 20th century was the bloodiest, rec the bloodiest century on record. More people were killed in violence, violent conflicts and wars in the 20th century than any other. And there were more Christian martyrs in the 20th century than in any other time in history. And that persecution continues, especially, unfortunately, in Muslim countries. But when I led a pilgrimage in 2001 over to the Holy Land, we spoke to Father Peter Vasco, who continues to this day to run the Franciscan Foundation for the Holy Land. He made the observation that in 50 years, the Holy Land is in danger of not having any Christians at all. Because the Christians there are persecuted both from the Muslims and from the Jews. The most oppressed minority in the Holy Land today are the Christians. We want to lift up our brothers and sisters around the world that are actively persecuted for the sake of proclaiming the gospel of Jesus by radical elements that don't stand for God's truth but simply stand for their own agenda. There are many, even within our own country, who have had to give their life 
because of mass murderers that have broken into schools and broken into churches, most recently in Texas. You just think of those people that were worshiping Jesus, mass murderer comes, comes in and wipes out many members of the congregation simply because they were proclaiming the name of Jesus. But much more likely is the persecution if we stand up for the values of Jesus. If we stand up against racism, against oppression of the poor, if we stand up for the rights of the unborn. Today is the death anniversary of Dorothy Day, the great Catholic social activist, co-founder with Peter Morin of the Catholic social worker movement. Dorothy Day led a rather uh, bohemian lifestyle as a, as a youth of sexual promiscuity. Uh, she had an abortion, she had a child out of wedlock, and then experienced a profound conversion and started living her Catholic Christian faith in a radical way. She went to daily mass, but she stood especially for the social teachings of the church, for the corporal works of mercy. And as a result of that, she found herself often thrown in jail as she opposed the Vietnam War, as she stood in solidarity with the farm workers, as she raised her voice consistently on behalf of the poor and stood in solidarity with alcoholics and drug addicts uh, of saying, the Lord loves you as well. Another one of my great heroes is Father Daniel Berrigan, a, a Jesuit who stood against the, uh, the Vietnam War and who went to jail as a result of his nonviolent uh, objections to that war. I remember when I was teaching at Loyola University a number of years ago, Father Berrigan was invited uh, in the midst of the first Gulf War. And some of the students on campus had signs that said, F President Bush. And Father Berrigan called them out and he said, President Bush is not the enemy here. You may stand against his political perspective and I stand against his political perspective, but he's not the enemy. We're called to love, love President Bush, to stand against policies that we disagree with. But Jesus calls us to love our enemies and not to vilify our opponents. If we do that, all we do is we, we create a, a deeper divide within this own country. Let's enter into a dialogue. And by nonviolent uh, uh, loving of those who disagree with us, attempt to win them over. That made a, a deep impression on me because the, the young radicals on campus thought that they would, they would be winning Father Berrigan's favor by saying, you know, let, let's get rid of this president whom, whom we hate. And Father Berrigan stood up to them and he said, no, that's not the gospel. That's not what it's about. Another hero of mine, a contemporary hero, hero is David Daleiden who is the young man who directs the Center for Medical Progress that uh, brought about all of these undercover videos that have exposed the seamy underside of Planned Parenthood, of their selling body parts at a profit to organizations around the country. David Daleiden has undergone one lawsuit after another, and even at this point, he has several lawsuits that if they go through, will end him in jail, end him throw him in jail for possibly decades of, of his life. It's one lawsuit after another, and the courts have suppressed some of the evidence, saying, no, these undercover videos can, cannot be exposed. Some of them, the most damaging evidence to, to date. David continues to speak truth to power, and to do that, and, and I believe, a courageous way. Our Catholic bishops have stood up for the rights of the oppressed within our country. They have challenged our immigration policies. They have challenged the canceling of the DACA program with no 
political solution in sight for those undocumented children who were brought to this country who have known no other culture but American culture. The Catholic bishops have challenged uh, our, our, our tax system that in the view of the Catholic bishops unf unfairly disadvantages the working poor within this country. If we stand up for the gospel message, we're going to be embroiled in controversies. And how we act in the face of those controversies has everything to do with whether I believe we're truly disciples of Jesus. If we simply become another angry voice saying, I got the truth and you do, don't, what good does that do? except further exacerbate the divide within this country. If we stand up for the values that we believe in and we do that in a loving way and we're willing, like I believe David Daleiden is, he's standing up to the abortion industry, but he doesn't do that with hatred. Just as when Father Berrigan st stood up to those radical youths, he didn't do that of vilifying them. Or Dorothy Day stood up for the farm, farm workers or st stood up for the derelicts and, and Skid Row. She didn't do that with hatred. Just as when Jesus stood up for the truth of his life, there was no hatred in his heart. My brothers and sisters, that's so easy. That's so, it's so easy to give in to the hatred. It's so difficult to love our enemies, to stand up for those, those values, and to stand up in the face of people who are screaming at us, saying, how come you're disagreeing with my agenda, whatever it is? Not to be intimidated and not to give in to that hatred is exceedingly difficult. Not to respond with an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, hatred for hatred. I think that's the, that's the test of our gospel message today. Can we embrace this truth even in the face of those who oppose what we believe to be the truth, what is sacred to us? Let's pray for that gift as we enter into this Mass and pray for our brothers and sisters who are putting their lives on the line for the sake of believing in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Heart to heart, hand in hand, praying for grace to understand. Spirit of Jesus, open our hearts to live and to love the gospel.